Hello, I'm Dr. Ken Landau. Thanks for watching. Let's talk about Zyaflex. Zyaflex is a medicine for treatment of Peyronie's disease. Peyronie's disease is a curvature of the erect penis. Now, this condition affects somewhere between 65,000 and 120,000 men each year, but only about 5,000 or 6,000 go to the doctor for treatment. The medicine Zyaflex was first approved by the Food and Drug Administration in 2010 for a condition involving the hand where scar tissue does not allow complete extension of the fourth and the fifth fingers. So the ring finger and the little finger are drawn toward the palm. Well, in a similar condition, this Peyronie's disease, the Zyaflex was approved in December of 2013. You might have seen ads for it. The ads suggest that if you suffer from a curve below the waist, you should go to a site known as learnaboutpd.com. But that particular site is really an infomercial for the drug. It's not really a site where you can learn about the disease. Now, a curvature is common in the erect penis. However, in Peyronie's disease, the average curvature ranges anywhere between about 40 to 50 degrees, and sometimes it could be as much as 90 degrees. Two-thirds of the time, the damage is on the top part of the penis with considerably less frequency on the side or on the bottom part of the penis. How common is the condition? Well, most people would say it's about 1% of the adult male population, but the numbers go anywhere from less than 1% all the way up to 23%. A recent study just examining men as they came into a doctor's office found about 9% of men suffered from some degree of this curvature. It's more common in Caucasians than in African Americans, and it typically involves one site, but could involve multiple sites. It involves men of any age, it was once upon a time thought to be more common in older men, but it's also common in relatively young men. It doesn't have to be a curvature of the penis. Actually, the material can draw the collagen into the skin so we can get some divots and some induration and some thickening or even a nodule. Well, the deposition of the scar tissue is about uh, between a half inch to three quarters of an inch. It's mostly connective tissue, mostly collagen, mostly scar, but sometimes calcium can develop in the area. It's thought that most cases have to do with some kind of trauma to the penis, micro trauma or macro trauma. It can occur typically during sex, maybe an accident, a sports injury, or sometimes caused by the doctor at the time of uh, radical prostatectomy or the treatment for benign enlargement of the prostate, we call the TERP, transurethral resection, maybe during cystoscopy. There's trauma to the area surrounding those tubes that fill up with blood. We call that the tunica albuginea. Sometimes it's a genetic condition, and it may be when people have the Peyronie's disease, up to a third of them have that Dupuytren's contracture I mentioned a moment ago where you can't extend the fourth and fifth fingers. On the other hand, if you have the Dupuytren's contracture, the likelihood of having the Peyronie's disease is relatively small. The collagen can cause a problem because it leads to penile malformation. It leads to curvatures and induration and narrowing and shortening. And if a person has multiple sites, if they happen to be on opposite sides of the penis, the penis could assume an hourglass configuration. Sometimes it's associated with other kind of disorders. That can be anywhere between an autoimmune condition or plantar fasciitis where you get some thickness on the bottom of the foot and it's rarely associated with diabetes or alcoholism or gout or hypertension or cigarette smoking, it has two phases of the disease. One phase, the original phase, is active or inflammatory. It lasts anywhere between six months and about two years. Sometimes, about half of the cases associated with painful erections. Ultimately, one progresses into the stable or quiescent phase where there is not any pain, we have stability of the plaque, and sometimes there's erectile dysfunction. The role of the genes is important, the genes for developing the collagen or breaking down the collagen or inflammation or ossification, all of those are important. And once the injury occurs, 
it sets some of those genes in action, and then ultimately it progresses to Peyronie's disease. The course of Peyronie's disease, occasionally it can spontaneously resolve. That's relatively unusual. Most of the time it stays either stable or it can become progressive. The treatment in office starts with diagnosis when the person complains of this condition. Sometimes you can feel that collagen tissue, but it often shows up on ultrasound examination, ultrasound examination to get a good idea of how extensive the condition is. The treatment with the Zyaflex, a course of treatment, involves injection, then another day come back, get another injection, then come back and get some modeling of the penis, tell you what that means in a moment. So the first thing is that the doctor, in order to mark out exactly where the collagen is, injects the penis with the medicine that causes an erection. Then you can see or feel exactly where the collagen is, draw a circle around it, let the penis become flaccid, and then we're ready for an injection. Well, it occurs, the injection occurs, on the curved side of the penis, a needle is injected only at one point. It's injected through the connective tissue, almost to the other side of the connective tissue, and then as the needle is withdrawn, the medicine is injected into the skin. The needle is not placed perpendicularly into the skin. It's not placed underneath the surface of the, uh, the, the fibrous tissue or the collagen tissue, and there is no anesthetic that's used on either of these two injections. No Novocaine, no Xylocaine. Then, after you have that injection, then you come back anywhere between one and three days later and get a second injection very close to the first injection and exactly the same way. And then you come back a third time anywhere between one and three days after the second injection for the modeling procedure. The modeling procedure means take the flaccid penis, either with or without some sort of local anesthetic, you grip it on either side of the injection site and you elongate and stretch the skin, stretch the penis, to a point of moderate resistance. You bend it opposite to the curvature, hold it for 30 seconds, rest for 30 seconds, and you can repeat that up to three times. And then tell the patient, when you go home, do the same thing three times a day for about six days. And if you happen to get an erection, well, then you want to try the same thing, but you should not do it to a point where you have pain and you should not have sexual relations for at least two weeks after the injection because if you do, the penis is liable to suffer what we call a fracture. Yes, you can fracture the penis even though there is no bone as we think about the arm or the leg. There is the possibility of fracture of the penis if a person has sex soon after the injection, within two weeks. Now, you can return up to four cycles worth of the medicine. Each cycle, remember, two injections, one to three days apart, and the modeling procedure, repeated at six-week intervals. Maximum is eight injections. We don't know if more injections would be safe. So the curvature, as long as it is in excess of 30 degrees, person can have the treatment. The average is about 40 to 50 degrees. Most men have had the condition by the time they see a doctor of somewhere between four and five years, but could be as long as 50 years. The end point of the procedure is when there is less than 15 degrees of curvature after the first treatment or after the second treatment or after the third treatment, or if the condition is no longer bothersome to the individual. Now, Zyaflex is a combination of two collagenases. They're grown from bacteria, and we've known about this kind of bacteria for a long time. There are some potential problems with injecting a medicine that digests collagen and they're especially important when we're injecting an organ as fragile as the penis. So we can have rupture of those cavities that fill up with the blood. That would be a penile fracture. That can be quite serious. Fortunately, it's relatively uncommon, but it is extremely common to develop ecchymoses, bleeding into the skin, or a hematoma, a collection of uh, blood underneath the surface of the skin that may require some sort of intervention or surgery 
And then it's extremely disconcerting. Some men develop a popping sensation that can be heard and that's either at the time of modeling of the penis or during subsequent intercourse. Well, most men are going to have some sort of mild to moderate complication of therapy, a side effect of therapy. 80% of the time it's going to go away spontaneously in about two weeks, which means about 20% of men with this treatment are still going to have problems after two weeks. The common problems in more than 50% of people are swelling and hematoma and pain. Sometimes men can develop painful erections. Occasionally, erectile dysfunction result. Sometimes itching can occur in the penis. That can be a sign of an allergy. That penile popping sensation I talked about that's extraordinarily disconcerting for men can occur in up to 13% of individuals. Sometimes blood in the urine or difficulty urination, but at least there's no shortening of the penis. Now, if you're going to have this kind of a therapy, you should be off blood thinners for at least a week. So you shouldn't be taking warfarin or Eliquis or Padoxa or Xeralto. You shouldn't even be taking more than 150 milligrams of aspirin or any of the other non-steroidals. Medicines like ibuprofen or naproxen or Aleve or Advil, those aren't appropriate. And it's important that the doctor not inject close to a blood vessel or the urethra or the corpora cavernosa that's underneath that tunica albuginea. The tunica albuginea is where the scar tissue does develop. Well, the government says that there should be, and there is, a risk evaluation and mitigation strategy. They want to keep an eye on the injections and make sure that one, the doctors are trained, and two, that a lot of side effects aren't occurring. Now, since the drug was licensed in 2010, there have been 574 cases reported to the FDA of significant or serious injuries, and that includes about 20 deaths. Now, that's not necessarily cause and effect, but they've been reported in the case of use of this particular medicine, the Zyaflex. Well, it's important to realize that, as with anything else, the proper technique is required. The medicine comes as a lyophilized powder, freeze-dried powder, and it can be kept in the refrigerator, but not in the freezer, and it has a special diluent, a special liquid that's injected into the bottle with the medicine. It has to be used in the correct percentage. So there's more of the medicine in the lyophilized bottle, and there's more of the liquid in the diluent. So the correct amount of liquid has to be injected into the bottle with the medicine. It's mixed up gently, and then a correct amount of medicine is withdrawn. There is more medicine in the bottle than will be used. The bottle is meant for one injection at one site. The bottle is kept at room temperature for about 15 to 60 minutes before the injection. Then one uses the medicine, has to be careful, you have to be careful, because this is the medicine, the collagenase, that digests collagen, and collagen is what's in your skin, and your tendons, and your ligaments, and in most other tissues. Well, this medicine contains two different collagenases, and they digest the collagen that's in the scar tissue. But if it's left to sit or used in too high a concentration, it can digest other types of collagen. Now, the collagen comes in fibrils, kind of like the, a piece of string. One of the collagenases digests the ends of the string, the other digests the center, and then once small pieces are occur, then both of them go to work. Well, after injection, a small amount of the material may be found in the bloodstream, but we don't think that that has any significant, or causes any significant harm. The improvement from baseline is about a third. So if you have a curvature between 60 degrees and or 30 degrees and 60 degrees, or whether you have 60 degrees to 90 degrees, you're going to get about a third improvement. That means that the curvature probably is not going to completely go away. In one study, there was about a 25% improvement in the curvature, 25 degree improvement in the curvature. 
without that remodeling, the bending and the twisting and the stretching of the penis, it seems that the medicine probably won't work. So it doesn't seem to be different than a placebo. So it seems that that stretching is very important. Now a urologist at the Cleveland Clinic says that this medicine is not really a game changer, but in men who have significant condition, it might sort of be a bridge where surgery won't be required. The medicine, or the condition, is named after Francois de la Peroni, who happened to be a French physician. He was the doctor for King Louis XV, and he described it in 1743. He put some topical mercury on the skin. It didn't work. He said he had some better treatment results with some holy water from a French thermal spa. But actually, the disease seems to go back to the 12th century. Are there other treatments? Sure, there are other treatments. And other treatments in Australia, they use Cialis. Injections of a medicine used for blood pressure control known as verapamil, a calcium blocker, seem to work in some cases. And then there are a variety of other kind of therapies, including high-frequency focused ultrasound and shockwave lithotripsy, and sometimes the need for surgery. Well, the medicine was originally developed by a company known as Biospecifics Technology, a small New York company, and it was subsequently sold to several other companies. Now it's part of a big conglomerate. The medicine itself first came out in 1965 as an ointment to debreed wounds. It was never very popular. Then in the 1970s, it was used to inject herniated discs. Again, not very popular until the 1990s when some orthopedic surgeons from a hospital in New York said, you know, this thing might work for Dupuytren's contracture. So that's what it's being used for. And then it, got to, it was found to be useful for Peyronie's disease. Now, it's owned by a company known as Endo International, and Endo International is headquartered in Dublin. The United States headquarters is in Pennsylvania, but there's some problems with the company. They have as their CEO a gentleman since 2013 who used to be a top executive at Valiant Pharmaceuticals. And if you've listened to the show for a while, you know that Valiant Pharmaceuticals has had a very checkered history. There are a lot of questionable activities that occurred at Valiant, some financial transactions that are relatively unusual, let's say. Well, in January of 2018, Bloomberg, the news service, said that everything that can go wrong at a drug company actually did go wrong at Endo. They have a debt of in excess of $8 billion, lots of lawsuits, regulatory challenges. They made Opana, that's an opioid. They're being sued at the present time by more than 125 different entities, state attorneys general, counties, municipalities. The lawyers against the company are those lawyers who were instrumental in the cigarette lawsuits in the 1990s. Then the company also makes vaginal mesh. They settled 46,000 lawsuits for three and a half billion dollars for that. And they also made testosterone gel. And they have 1,300 lawsuits claiming men had heart attacks because they put the testosterone gel on. And now they're pushing the idea of injecting a medicine that dissolves collagen in the penis. Well, I think the end of the story hasn't yet been written, but they're trying to get approval. They're trying to see whether the medicine fits in for frozen shoulder or lipomas or cellulite. Medicine's expensive. So the company comes up with a copay card, and the copay card theoretically could save you $1,200 each treatment. Now, typically the doctor provides the drug, but sometimes in order to keep the overhead in the office low, they tell you to go out in the pharmacy and buy the drug. The drug has increased in expense, increased in cost to you, the patient. In September of 2015, the cost, if you wanted to plunk down some cash, was about $3,600. In 2016, that had increased to about $3,900. Now, it's over $4,400.
Well, that's kind of silly, especially for a drug that came out overpriced at a dose uh, treatment of $3,250. So here we have a medicine that works a little bit. It's fair. It's not really a cure for the condition. It's a treatment to improve the condition, but a curvature still exists, so it's possible that we can avoid surgery, but the treatment's associated with a significant number of side effects. And remember, the company behind it seems to have an awful lot of legal issues. So my suggestion, if you're continue, if considering this drug, proceed with caution. I'm Dr. Ken Landau.